About time you showed up. All right, I want to know what's going on. I've been trying to get Delgado's attention for, oh, I don't know, three years now. And what do I get? Nothing but radio silence. Then out of nowhere, just when Neva and I are closing in on a huge score of our own, Delgado orders me to help you out. Because the only way to achieve a win is by agreeing to play the game in the first place. Worst case scenario, I don't make the fleet, but I end up a couple thousand credits richer. That's almost a win-win, don't you think? Yeah, I figured you'd say something like that. Just another one of Delgado's loyal little soldiers, huh? Fine, have it your way. So Neva's message said you were here for Dombrowski. Was that all she sent you here to do? Or was there something else you were sent here to steal? Hmm. Okay. So why are you targeting a Gall Bank exec anyway? Not exactly your average Crimson Fleet prey. Why the interest? His credentials. So you're hitting the Gall Bank branch in New Atlantis. Nice score, very lucrative and very dangerous. If you're going after a gold mine like that, I'll want to come along for the ride. Or you're not getting near Dombrowski. It would seem we have little choice in the matter. We should hear him out. Well, well. It appears we have a mind reader here. You're absolutely right. I don't want money. I want back into the Crimson Fleet. It's as simple as that. Fine. You want to play it that way, and suit yourself. Dombrowski's a full-timer aboard the Siren of the Stars. Probably spends more time cruising the space lanes than actually working. Fortunately, the Siren is hosting the Tehran Preservation Society charity gala. Larry won't be able to resist showing off his VIP clout. To get what you need, you're gonna have to attend the gala, talk to his fellow philanthropists, and dig up some dirt. Oh no. Is shooting everyone an option? Alternately shooting ourselves to avoid it? <laughs> yeah, well lucky for you it's not black tie, so you'll be fine. This card will allow you to access the Starview Ballroom. If you need my help, I'll be relaxing in one of the upper level lounges. Head inside and mingle with the crowd. No one likes Dombrowski, so they'll be more than happy to share his dirty secrets. Now you're speaking my language. Oh, there's one last thing. Dryden equips all of their Starliners with the latest acoustic threat detection. Meaning that you lose patience and kill anyone aboard the ship, security will be alerted and all hell will break loose. Anyway, I suppose that's enough to get you started. Good luck. Oh, and while you're at the gala, avoid the canopies. They're frozen. Captain Rokov is one of the most easygoing COs I've ever worked with. These newer vessels more or less run autonomously. Purser can 
assist you with any matters regarding the security. Have you tried the canopies? Or was it the The society chair has really outdone herself this time. Here for business at present. Please remain in designated passenger areas at all times. Have a safe journey. That you is absolutely smooth. Quite a lovely Starliner. Nothing but I the best for the society. I certainly hope they decide eh? to hold all future society events aboard the Starliner. Benjamin Bayou of Neon won the award the first time it was presented, but he dropped out of this society a couple of years back. Do we really need to go over? Let's put it this way. He screwed over so many people, if he suddenly disappeared from the universe, I don't think anyone would miss him. Don't forget to donate to the cause. So, so what brings you, what aboard? Brings you aboard? It's for the society's high rollers. If you don't have more than eight figures in your account, I wouldn't even bother going after the award. <laughs> I don't know why Larry's attending this event. He could care less about any planet, let alone the Earth. Hmm. Well, that was boring. Hello. Are you a member of... Even if I was offered the award, I wouldn't take it. Can you imagine the security nightmare I'd have to deal with? No, thank you. Larry has an A-level executive rating over at Galbank. Which means... He has access to everyone's accounts at the touch of a button. Nice to have met you. Pleased to make your acquaintance. An open bar would have Pleased been nice. To make your acquaintance. Trident's gouging us for every credit we've got. Sheila Holbrook is chair of the award committee this year. The way she dotes over that glorified trophy, you'd think it was her own child. The considerable amounts of cash that Dombrowski donates is the only reason we allow him to attend society functions. That's all then? Okay. Mind moving along? I'm trying to enjoy the celebration. Here for a business or a pleasure? His behavior towards women is abominable. That man really ought to be ashamed of himself. Enjoy the rest of the event. Have you tried the canapes? Horrid. Positively horrid. That view is absolutely... He's been spending a lot of time with Claudia Swist. Quality time, if you catch my meaning. I'm certain his wife doesn't know a thing about it. Nice to have met you. So, what brings you aboard? Is this important? I don't have a lot of time for idle nonsense. Yes. I'm extremely busy preparing for the award ceremony, so this better be important. Yes, I am. Actually, I've been entrusted with the transfer of the award for the last seven of its nine years. Why do you ask? In my cabin? Oh, please. Why would I do something so foolish? I'll have you know that the award is locked inside the master safe, located at the purser's office. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have much more important things on my agenda than to speak to the likes of you. An open bar would have been nice. 
and tried to get out here. If this is not the very definition of decadence, I do not know what else. Glad to have you aboard. Welcome to the purser's office. I'm Chief Purser Murata. How can I be of assistance today? I've only seen it briefly myself, but I can assure you that it's quite lovely. Unfortunately, the item is locked inside of our safe, which can only be accessed by presenting an appropriate claim ID. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Well, if you change your mind, I'll be here. Have a wonderful trip. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to make you stay more comfortable. Don't forget to keep your security pass handy at all times. Must you continue these unwelcome interruptions? I'm a very busy woman. Excuse me? And why in goodness name would I do something as foolish as that? And why in goodness name would I possibly agree to that ridiculous demand? This isn't getting us anywhere. Nice try, but no. I'd like to tell you. I really would. I'd like to think so. Oh, just take the damn thing already. Listen, maybe you can keep this between us. If the award goes missing, there's no need for the insurance company to get involved. The society chair is really... If the rest of this ship is any indication, I imagine there is an incredible amount of wealth stored in there right now. Do I know you? Look, I think you're definitely confused here. I really don't have time to have a discussion with you. My partner's waiting for me. He's a very important man. His wife? <laughs> oh, for the love of God. I told Larry to keep his big mouth shut, but did he listen? No. He had to impress his friends and treat me like a trophy. Look, I've been in this business for a long time, and I know how this game works, so let's skip all the banter and get it over with. What's it gonna take to make us both happy? If I give you dirt on that son of a bitch Dombrowski, all I'm doing is endangering myself. Why would I do that? If you had another way to get the information, you wouldn't be dealing. You'd be demanding.
Yeah, you could be right. You know more about me than I suspected. Can't have that. I'd love to see that man suffer. That's true. For once, I would like to see him squirm. If you got the info, he might come after me. You know what? Forget it. The price of doing business by slinging mud is way too steep. What else you got? You're not very bright, are you? I'm a grade C3 exec at Galbang. That means my credentials get me into two places. The front door and the ladies' room. If that's all you really want, you're certainly welcome to them. You're willing to pay me to give you dirt on Larry? <laughs> Sorry, I... I thought I'd end up on the short end of the deal. You know, this whole thing really pisses me off. Larry and I had the perfect scheme where thousands of credits all worked out, and then he goes and flushes the whole thing down the toilet. I do not understand. Your anger is focused on Mr. Dombrowski, but clearly the failure of this plan rests on you as well. If you had to work near him day in and day out, I think you'd understand. He's a disgusting pig, plain and simple. Oh, angry isn't even the right word. The plan was solid. Larry got together with myself and this other guy, Gabriel Vera. He's some big wig over at UC Security. I doctored the transactions, Larry wiped them off the system, and Vera kept the legal pressure off of us. We were scamming Galbank for months. It was going well until I discovered Larry was cheating everyone by changing each transaction in his favor before deleting them. You won't do that. You're here because you've got some kind of side hustle in the works. If you wanted to blow the whistle, you would have boarded this ship with the authorities. I wish I had some. Maybe you should try talking to Gabriel Vera. He should be around here somewhere. If he doesn't want to cooperate, just mention my name. That should grab his attention. Good luck. You're gonna need it. A computer algorithm that basically creates a randomized number of false ghost credits that mimic the crypto key of actual credits. Then the algorithm simply passes the ghost credits to whatever legit transfers that the bank transacts. The genuine credits enter a dummy account. The best part is that I also alter the crypto keys as the real cash flows into our accounts. By the time it lands in our pockets, the credits are clean. So on paper, it appears that all of the bank's transactions are covered, when it's really just our ghosted dummy creds. <laughs> Genius, right? Yeah, I... Hello? What do you think is going on? I'm using that gullible idiot to get what I want. If I have to squash him on my way to the top, then so be it. Let's get one thing straight. Larry Dombrowski's no saint. He deserves everything that's coming to him.
Saints seem few and far between these days. Dombrowski is a piece of human garbage. He'd stab you in the back for table scraps, then stab you again to steal dessert. The plan's always been to milk the guy for everything he's worth, and then leave him in the dust. Not bad for a lowly Galbank worker drone, right? What, are you writing a damn novel? <sighs> Fine. Vera works for UC Security, so he kept a lookout on their comnet for any Galbank chatter. I guess you could call him our early warning system. And Dombrowski made sure that all of the crypto manipulation I was working on didn't turn up in Galbank's automatic audits. You need top clearance for that kind of access, so we had to cut him in, whether we liked it or not. I hope you hurt Dombrowski. Nail his ass right to the wall. Any complaints about your crews should be directed to one of the staff. I certainly hope they decide to hold all Quite an event they're throwing today, don't you think? Hello. You here for the charity event? Oh, uh, I'm afraid that's a bit outside my wheelhouse. I work for UC Security, so I don't think I could be of much help. I have nothing to do with Galbank. Claudia sent you, did she? Look, friend, I don't know if you're just a little drunk, maybe a touch crazy, or both. Whatever you think you know about me, you're dead wrong. So back off. We both know exactly who you are. <laughs> Just in case you weren't aware, I am the authorities. Anything you try to report will boil down to your word against mine. And since I work for UC Security, who do you think people will believe? Hello. Are you a member of the society? I saw you little exchange with Vera. Keep that up and I guarantee that Embassar's gonna demand that you be arrested. Which is why he's threatening you. That makes sense. We need hard evidence of their scheme. It's gonna be tricky. The problem is he's not gonna talk to you in public. We need to get Vera isolated so he'll spill everything he knows. Smart. If there's an emergency, standard practice is for all passengers to clear the decks and report to their cabins for lockdown. I think the best chance we have would be to tamper with the life support sensors. Manipulate a few controls and you can fool the monitoring system into thinking there's a, a life support failure. And there you have your emergency. Agreed. The consequences of getting it wrong would be disastrous. You don't need to know anything about the system. All you need to do is access the maintenance area and throw some switches. One more thing. If Chief Engineer Sundin gives you any trouble, tell him 
I'll erase that gambling debt he owes me. I prefer you use that as a last resort, but hey, what's the harm in losing a few credits when I'm on the brink of rejoining the fleet, right? Anyway, I better start packing. Things are getting hot around here, and won't be long before Trident figures out you had help. Get back to it. Quite a lovely starliner. Out. This area is off limits to passengers. Wait a second. You're Captain Rokov's guest, right? Didn't expect to see you down here. Sorry to give you trouble. What can I do for you? Oh, uh, sorry. That area is off limits. No exceptions. All right, all right. No need to get pushy about it. Oof. Captain Rokov sure picked some weird friends. Tell you what, I'm just going to step out for a bit and stretch my legs. Maybe you can hold this for me while I'm away. Feel free to look around, but don't mess with any of the This is well maintained, to be sure, but... Obviously, the trains have all been spent on the area the guests actually see. All passengers, may I have your attention, please? The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. Much nicer in here now. Plenty of room. Sharp contrast from the crew quarters, is it not? I was wondering if you were the cause of the shipwide emergency. It's time you stop playing games and tell me why you're here. You're working for Ikande's little anti pirating outfit? So what? I have nothing to do with the Crimson Fleet. And even if I suddenly decided to stay loyal to the old UC, why would I possibly want to incriminate myself by handing over evidence? Claudia said that. You sure? Damn it! That means my money's already gone. And Dombrowski's going to walk All away with a fortune. May I have your I'd love to see the bastard fry. The but if I give you that information and it falls into the wrong hands, I... Could end up in jail. At least I walk away with something. All right, you have yourself a deal. Here, with this slate and this recording to tie it all together, you'll be able to nail his ass to the wall. He'll do whatever you want. Just remember that you promised to leave me out of it. You better tell Dombrowski to run, because if you don't kill him, I will. Our security team would appreciate if you please shelter in your cabin during...
you must be the one who's been accosting Claudia and Gabriel. I'm uncertain what you hope to accomplish here, but it appears we should rapidly enter into some sort of negotiation. Excellent, excellent. So, before we begin, let's review the facts. First, it's clear that you've obtained insider knowledge of my arrangement to defraud Gal Bank. The means of the method, but not the motive. And second, I'm going to hypothesize that my compatriots are despondent regarding their share and have assisted you with this endeavor, hmm? Since we're speaking and I'm not at the reporting end of a bullet, this leads me to conclude that you desire something personal from me. I pride myself on having an intensely thorough education, though I'd hardly call myself a professor. Though I'm sure that your compliment also meant you were having trouble understanding what I've been saying. In blunt terms, you have compromising materials about me in your possession. The only thing I have to offer in return are my gal bank credentials. I assume that's what you've been angling for all along? Will there be much more of this? My head is starting to hurt. Splendid. It appears we've reached an accord. Wait, I'm sorry. Let me simplify that for you. It sounds like we have a deal. Oh, of course I trust you'll understand if I ask for us to avoid any further contact. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to formulate how I'm going to utterly All ruin two very annoying really business associates. Please. Good day. The captain has declared a ship-wide emergency. Please report to your cabins in an orderly fashion and remain there until you receive further instructions. The ship is in a state of emergency. Please return to your cabin immediately. There's no cause for alarm. I'm sure this is just a minor malfunction or a drill. Well, looks like everything worked out. Just like we planned. I'm glad you feel that way. Just remember to tell Delgado how much I pitched into help. You know, I'm still wondering exactly what you needed those credentials for. You feel like telling me, partner? Ah, so he told you to keep it from me. I see. I wouldn't want you to risk your position with the fleet like I did, so I'll just leave it alone. Anyway, I suppose there's nothing stopping me from rejoining the fleet now. It's been a long time coming. I owe you one, Dover Beach. Nonsense. If there's one universal constant you can depend on, it's that Yevgeny Rokov always makes good on his deals. Always. Well, I suppose this is where we part company. Hopefully the next time we meet, we'll be aboard the key. I need to pack up and get out of here. What is it now? Hey! 
be doing any mining out there without me. Anything I can help you with? Need some work done? Sure, how about... I'm sure you can find... I'm sure you can find...
scanned as you enter the city. of nearly every individual. Hello. Welcome to the... <clears throat> the uh, Galbank Archives. May I see your credentials, please? Oh, no. None at all. I'm all alone down here. Yeah, yep. Completely by myself. Well, I, I guess you're down here too, right? So <laughs> that's two of us now. Sorry, not trying to lie to you or anything, just, uh, yeah. Just one moment while I verify. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Dombrowski. Welcome, sir. Give me a moment to log your visit and then I'll unseal the archives. No. No, never, not at all. I I'm so sorry. Hey, uh, look, please don't, don't mention this to my supervisor, okay? She'll give me a low rating and I'm gonna end up scrubbing floors. Me? No. Look, this is my first day on the job. Just cut me some slack, okay? I can't afford to lose it. Got a wife and kids to feed. Everything checks out. Give me a moment to log your visit, and then I'll unseal the archives. There we go. Have a wonderful day.
has happened while we have been away. Your buddy Rokoff is aboard the key. Told me everything had happened. Yeah, he won't shut up about you. Keeps going on and on. 
Now I remember why we kicked his ass out the fleet. Yeah, that be a first. All right, neighbor, you've made your point. Well, since you're vouching for Rokov, I guess we can give him another chance. All right, now that is out of the way, we can move on to the matter at hand. Grix's legacy. Speaking of which, let me see that data you copied from the Galbank archives. Ah, so the Galbank transport went down over Bannock 4. Bannock. Why does that sound familiar? Neva? Yeah, yeah, keep your panties on. I'm looking it up. And... I got it. Bannock 4. Let's see. Damn it. Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant. We can't even get a ship near the thing without frying every circuit aboard. Approaching that in, well, in any ship would be suicide. Don't know that one, huh? Well, pick up your pencil. There's gonna be a test on this later. EM class means the planet is giving off a ridiculously high amount of electromagnetic radiation. We're talking off the charts here. Fly your ship anywhere near one of these death traps, and you'll blow every single circuit on your ship. You'd be dead in space. Get it? Yeah, sure. We'll just wrap your ship in a ton of copper and launch you right in there. That ought to do the trick, right? Both of you shut up and think for a second. I'm sure Griggs hit the same roadblock. All we need to do is figure out how he got around it. This sounds like a goddamn waste of time to me. That's the spirit, Rook. That is the essence of the Crimson Fleet that has been slipping away lately. Neighbor, the Galbank data says the transport had a CBR-27 transponder. Can we track that kind of thing? Pinpoint its exact location? That transponder is military grade. We're talking ultra bit encryption, constantly reshuffling frequencies. We don't have shit like that laying around. But before you get that pissy look on your face, I heard that the UC's been working on a ship signal decryption system called the Com Spike. We grabbed that little beauty. And we'll be able to track anything you want. All right, here is the plan, so shut up and listen. Rook, I want you and Neva to put your heads together and get us that comp spike. I don't care if it's mounted at the top of mast. I want it. In the meantime, I'm going to find out more about this EM class gas giant problem. And I think I know just who to ask. Give me a little time to crunch the numbers on the comm spike with Jazz, and I'll point us in the right direction. We do or we die. That's the way Cricks did things. And that is the way we should have been doing it for years. It's as simple as that. I promise? You gonna write that in your diary, little girl? All right, that is enough. We are in arm's reach of Crix's legacy, and I don't have time to deal with this kind of bullshit. Now, both of you, get the hell out of here and get to work. All right, let's get this over with. Follow me. If you are free soon, could we talk?
Let's get right to it. Did you get the Earth Savior Award? Or am I gonna be very disappointed? Well, well. Look at that. You followed my directions, and now you're gonna end up with some credits in your pocket. That about does it, then. Hell of a deal for both of us, I'd say. Anyway, here's your cash. Keep this up, and I might even start respecting you. All right, Fleet. We've all got work to do, so let's get to it. I have been thinking about what we talked about before. The idea of purpose in one's life. You agreed with me that true purpose can be a driving force in life. I found that comforting. But something has been nagging at me since. I have been single-minded in my pursuits. I have always believed the decisions I made were necessary. That there was no other option. I have sacrificed much to be where I am now. And... I'm starting to wonder if it has been worth it. Thank you. I have always believed... No. Hoped. That is true. I have told you that... I am not one to discuss my past. And yet... No, that is not what I am trying to say. I... promised to provide for my family. That meant working with smugglers to procure supplies we could not acquire any other way. I have spent my adult life away from my home. Jumping from one planet to the next, living in dangerous conditions. 
often surrounded by violence. We were taught from a very young age that family always comes first, and no price is too great to pay to ensure its survival. I was convinced from the beginning that it was unwise to let anyone get too close. I had, maybe not quite friends, but people I cared about. Yet there was always a distance I could not reach across. I often find other people complicated and confusing. It seemed easier to not become attached, especially when circumstances meant I might never see them again, with no warning. And yet here we are. I find we work better together. What I am trying to say is that I now wonder whether it has been the right decision to distance myself from others. I suppose this is true. Thank you for listening to me. These are not easy conversations for me. Lieutenant Toft is as organized as they come. So I heard there was a bit of excitement on the Siren of the Stars. Your handiwork, I assume? Yes, and I heard there were no casualties. Excellent work. Except for the ecliptic hit squad that you took down at the Archives. You're taking care of that mess, by the way. Speaking of which, I assume you copied the information from the Galbank's computers. Let me see what you've got. So the legacy went down at Bannock 4. Bannock 4. Hmm. Why does that sound familiar, Doft? Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant, sir. There isn't a ship in the fleet that could safely get near that type of world. It sounds like you admire that lunatic. I think his gospel's gone straight to your head. Maybe we made a mistake choosing you for this assignment. That's enough, Lieutenant. Even if Delgado has an immediate solution to the EM problem, there's still the matter of tracing the legacy's transponder signal.
They have information about the gum spike? <sighs> Damn it. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that device, sir. No, you shouldn't be familiar with it. It's a highly classified project. It's an advanced signal decryption and tracking device that the UC Navy's been working on for years. How the hell did the Crimson Fleet find out about that? There must be an information leak somewhere, sir. It's the only thing that makes sense. I'll see what I can find out. Fine. This is what we're going to do. You keep playing along and go after the comm spike. Lieutenant Toft and I will see what we can find out about Bannock 4. I don't see the point. The Crimson Fleet apparently has a pipeline of information flowing from somewhere within the UC military. Any attempt to move the comm spike would be a waste of time. We need to play this close to the vest. My superiors are stubborn. They aren't going to authorize an attack on the key based on my flights of fancy, I've been told. We need more evidence that all the Crimson Fleet's plans will result in them actually getting their hands on this fabled cache of credits. Perfect. Just stick with the plan and we'll see who gets to Krix's legacy first. Heard you made off with something called the Earth Savior Award. Damn pirates will have you steal anything that isn't bolted down. All right, Jazz, what do you got? According to the latest, the comm spike is being developed at UC Star Station SY920. Location undisclosed. Fantastic. So how do we disclose it? 
we could lean on your smuggling contact. Call in that favor. You know who I mean. Our friend on Jim's. Nice one, Jazz. I'll make the arrangements. All right, Rook. Next stop, New Atlantis. Your connection is Juan Dayu. She's got most of the premium UC smuggling routes locked down tight. If you don't piss her off, she should be able to sneak you past SY920's security. Just remember to count your fingers after you shake hands with her. She would be wise to do the same. I sure hope so. But she might be our only crack at finding a decent decryption device. Once Juan gets you past the guard dogs, it's gonna be on you to locate the comm spike. According to the data we have, it's in the prototype phase, meaning there should only be a single device aboard the station. Basically, you break it, you bought it. You'd better, for your sake. Oh, and one more thing. SY920 is a UC military installation. That means it's guarded by heavily armed troops. And we both know those idiots don't mess around. If you intend to turn the place into a shooting gallery, you might want to be sure you're hauling an arsenal, because you're gonna need it. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so I'm gonna arrange a meeting with Juan at Kay's place in the well. In the meantime, I'll make sure Jazz comes up with a solution to the electromagnetic atmosphere problem at Bannock 4. Oh, okay. You'll make sure. More like get drunk while Jazz does all the hard work. Typical. Privileges of rank, my darling. We'll discuss it a little later. And you, get the hell out of here. And don't come back without that calm spike in your cargo bay. Stay sharp, Rook. It would seem that none of the wealth is stolen. Here, I have something for you. Yes, well, it seemed like a good idea. I saw it earlier and thought you might like it. Or find it useful. Or, well, whatever. Of course. We are partners, are we not? I will keep an eye out in the future. And if I see something, I might hold on to it for you. Yes, you need... If there's anything you...
That is all. If you don't see what you want, ah. feel free to ask. Oh, oh, please, take a look. Thanks for shopping at Jemison Mercantile. It takes a strong mind and a good eye to sell art. Your neighbor's new recruit? Careful. The walls have ears. SY 920 is one of my regular stops, so I already have the necessary approvals. Neva says you're after a piece of UC tech. So to get it, we're going to need to get you on board. I can do that. But I have conditions. Good. If I can be candid, for this job to work, we'll have to do this my way. We take my ship, and you're a member of my crew. But make no mistake, once you board, the risk is entirely yours. This route is highly lucrative, and sacrificing it is you know not why? an option. You're a man who takes pride in your work. I appreciate the praise, but I wouldn't say it's anything special. Do not mistake us for amateurs. We will get the job done without sacrificing your route. I appreciate the confidence. I just want to remind you, this job calls for more discretion than your usual swashbuckling adventures. In any case, when you're ready, meet me at my ship. It's the Jade Swan. And make sure you're prepared for the long haul. Once you're on board SY920, you can't come and go as you please. We'll talk more on the ship. Kay's food is as close to home cooking as you'll find around right here.
be taking off immediately, or are there other matters that require your attention? All right, a few things to note. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Pretend you're a piece of cargo if you have to. Of course, I don't expect it to be. The less talking all of us have to do, the better. You'll get no argument from me. It'll be hard enough explaining why I have two new crew members. Now, like I said before, once we take off, there's no turning back until this job is done. If you need to take care of anything before we leave, do it. If you want to ask me any other questions, go for it. All right, then get comfortable. We leave for SY920 immediately. All crew prepare for takeoff. Routing power to engine and grab drive. All systems go. We'll graph jump the SY920 from here. Don't worry about your personal ship. The fleet will make sure it's secure. You can take this time to prepare. Just try not to bother my pilot while they're flying. Don't worry. Captain, I've spent half my life walking and chewing gum at the same time. I can handle a little banter. Sounds like you're putting in a request for double duty. Captain, I retract my earlier statement. For the record, I don't even like gum. <laughs> Noted. Just get us there safe. Roger that. Okay, we're in. First things first. The station is enormous, with checkpoints everywhere. T-1, 
To get past them, you'll need a military uniform. And to get a uniform, you'll need to get to the barracks. There should be a way through the vents. You can get to them via the maintenance door downstairs. There's an intercom there as well, where we can make contact. Once you get a uniform, it should be fairly easy to find an elevator to the command bay. But, if at any point your cover's blown, I'm gone. I would hope not. But if they do, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Either way, for now, get on that station and find that intercom. We'll talk more then. Ah, uh, hello. Nobody can stop the Crimson Fleet. As long as the credits keep rolling in, life's good. Hello. Say the word, and we shall be on our way. You with the Jade Swan? Loading and unloading only. Stay clear of the military barracks. Do your job, keep your head down, and we won't have trouble.
you with the Jade Swan. Loading and unloading only. Stay clear. Ah, oh, my elbow's killing me. Succeed at that before we are discovered.
word is, Commander Woods might be coming back. Things have gotten real tight since Commander Natara took over for Commander Woods. A lot of soldiers don't like Been to the mess hall? Culinary specialist Okoye is a damn good chef. on this station are some of the best in the galaxy. It seems to be where we left it. Need your clearance code, Marine. All right, Ensign, let's hear it. Sorry, Ensign, code doesn't match. Checkpoints have not been a problem so far. There is little reason to think this one would be different. I like the confidence. But remember, they tend to get harder the further you go. Hence, the clearance code. Try the security office. They likely have a computer there that has what you need. Going dark for now. We'll talk again once you've located your target. Need your clearance code, Marine.
All right, Ensign, let's hear it. You're clear, Ensign Zeremi. I assume the two of you are together? Yes, we are t together. Then you're both clear. Tests with the comms by Dr. Vogel was made a request for more personnel. It seems there was an accident. Ugh. It's always something with that doctor. Not to change the subject, but are we concerned about potential leaks? No. Until you can provide more substantial proof, we'll simply monitor the situation at the cargo bay. For now, I've recommended to Dr. Vogel. Assuming all systems are nominal, we are ready to depart. Bayou here. Goggles almost unloaded. We'll be departing shortly. You are, and I've delivered you just as the Gardo asked. That being said, I can stay in orbit for a short while. I'll need to send word to Delgado anyway, if you don't get off that station. But it looks like you'll need to find your own way off the ship. That doesn't mean you're trapped. On a station this big, there are bound to be other vessels you can steal. As a member of the Crimson Fleet, I trust you can handle that. I like the confidence. Either way, you're going to get your chance to prove it. Good luck. If you make it out alive, next time you're at the Nova, I'll buy you a drink. Accepting transponder data in the Harvard system might be promising. Wait, who are you? Why are you in here? Did you not see the sign? The comm spike. But I can't just hand it to you. It's a module for a ship. It's attached to a prototype in one of our docking ports. We're still in the testing phase, running decryptions across a variety of signal types. But the results so far have been very promising. It can even interpolate signal data lost in the retrieval. It really is a wondrous technology. Yes, it's not quite cracking the Enigma code, but it will give us a significant tactical advantage. We'll be able to infer everything from battle plans to meal consumption. Not that we'd care about that sort of thing, uh, outside of the effects of diet on combat readiness. And yes, there are certain kinks to be worked out, missing parts and the occasional traumatic injury here and there, but it's all part of the adventure. Oh, it's ready. 
We're long past the inference stage. Statistical models can only go so far. And now that we've corrected the prior mishaps, it's time for real flesh and blood pilots to stress test the systems. The kind unafraid to make the necessary sacrifices. In short, I've requested a full squadron of these brave and fearless marines to be transferred to the station. They'll give the prototype a final run, and provided there are minimal casualties, we can present our findings to Mast. That was fast. I thought I put in the request this morning. Normally my requests aren't given this much attention, let alone haste. It seems a tad suspicious. We are in need of more tests to reach Beta, and not horses. Actual human test pilots. All right, you've convinced me. You're the new test pilot. You'll need a uniform and a terminal password to authorize a flight and get past Natara's cumbersome checkpoints. The uniform you can get in the locker room area, the password you get from me. You'll find the prototype ship at docking bay 8. Use the password to access the flight terminals in the control center. And of course, best of luck. You are doing science a great service by undertaking this sacrifice. If you aren't assigned to this level, Ensign, you need to leave. Yes, if you have experience flying, you should talk to Dr. Bolton. I don't know. I've flown a discovery. Test pilots only beyond this point. Not on my watch. Outside of Dr. Vogel, the only person to authorize additional permissions is Commander Natara, and I don't see either of them with you. Reporting for duty, pilot. Access granted. Be sure to head to the control center and schedule the flight. And good luck. Yes. Commander Natara is asking to be on alert. Well, I haven't seen anyone suspicious. Well, from what I heard, they could be wearing the
we are here, what will be our next course of action? Prototype ship, you are cleared for takeoff. We'll begin the test on your departure. Like you got a new toy for me. Go on in and give everyone the lowdown. We'll take care of things from here. That's a real nice ship you brought in. I can't wait to tinker with it. So there I am. You see security on Neva was right about you. It's good to have a promising rookie with the fleet. I won't deny I helped. Let's hope the compensation reflects that, huh? Anyway, I believe I owe you a drink. It's the last time I'm paying, of course. Because if Dalgado's right about Crix's legacy, You've earned more than your fair share already with that comm spike. Sounds like you're on board as a true believer. I have to admit, the way things are going, I'm starting to believe myself. Whether Crix's legacy is real or not, we have a job to do, and we will see it through. Anyway, I've kept you long enough. Now that you've had your drink, and my debt is paid, it's time for you to give Delgado the good news. The fleet protects our home. Be sure and check your pockets when we leave. Be certain you still have everything in them. If you want to pad that account of yours, Jasmine tells me that you not only brought us the comm spike, but an entire prototype UC ship. I'm impressed, Rook. Very impressed. Shh, 
Should have taken the compliment, Rook. Dale doesn't give those out often. Juan gave us the full rundown of your little smash and grab operation. She gave you some really high praise. Said you were a pro. And from what I hear, receiving praise from Juan Dayu is quite an accomplishment. All in all, a job well done. Now, on to the business at hand. Jasmine, are you there? Yep, I'm here, boss. What's up? How's it going? I already have two of my crew tearing the ship apart from one end to the other. Com spike shouldn't be too tough to extract. I'm looking forward to seeing what those UC techs have been up to. Keep me posted. All right, that leaves our electromagnetic atmosphere problem. And I think we've discovered a solution. There's a corporation in the city of Neon called Jenardyne. They're responsible for the massive conduction grid that powers the city. We get our hands on their electrical absorption tech, and Jasmine swears she can tame it to handle Bannock 4. You damn right she can. My girl can piece together a jump engine with her eyes shut. Literally, I've seen her do it. Lost good money on that bet. All right, let's not get carried away, Neva. Now, why don't you give us the info on our neon contact? You get to meet up with the lovely Estelle Vincent. She's had her deft little fingers on the pulse of neon for some time now. Whatever info you need, I guarantee she can get. Estelle is one of the most reliable captains we have in the fleet. If I want something done, there's none of the typical bullshit. It gets done, and afterward we all split the cash. No, no, no. There is no getting along here. You are going to do everything she asks. Follow her instructions to the letter. She is valuable to the fleet. You piss her off and we lose her as a contact, you're going to be answering to me. We have dealt with more than a few of your captains. This one should be no problem. You did right by one. But she's almost as green as you two. Estelle is different. Estelle will be waiting at Madame Savage's place. I'd say don't keep her waiting. But chances are she won't mind. Girl loves her liquor. And keep your eyes on the prize. Neon's one big distraction for people like us. So I want you focused. We are one step away from Quix's legacy, and we cannot afford any screw-ups.
Pardon. A lot of us had our doubts about you. But you're really making progress with this operation. It seems you had quite the eventful mission on your hands. You still have the Crimson Fleet's trust, and you were able to spare lives in the process. And on behalf of the United Colonies and Commander Natara, I thank you. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt, but there's still the matter of the comm spike to discuss. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Time is short, and we should get to the matter at hand. Please give me your report. That all depends on what you brought back from your mission. Aside from your eyewitness testimony, I assume you have the usual evidence that could lead to her incarceration? I can take it off your hands once we complete your debriefing, but at the moment, I'm far more concerned about the comm spike. 
With the acquisition of the Comspike, the fleet is one step closer to Crix's legacy. And the more people we arrest, the greater the chance that your infiltration is discovered. We're working against the clock here, so let's start by discussing the status of the Comspike. Then it's just a matter of time before she reverse engineers it to fit the fleet's purposes. So what does Delgado have you doing next? Has he solved the Bannock 4 problem? The conduction grid? That's... brilliant. But is it actually possible? It's 80-year-old tech. Sorry, sir. The conduction grid is how Neon generates its power. It essentially absorbs lightning strikes and converts it to usable energy. It would take a hell of an engineer to modify the technology to handle Bannock 4's EM field. An engineer, like Jasmine Durand. That's the case. Inform our contacts on Neon that our operative will be touching down there in the near future. Absolutely, sir. And before you depart, I wanted you to know that your efforts are helping us gain interest among my superiors. They're finally beginning to believe that we can take down the Crimson Fleet and make amends for the UC's embarrassing mistake. Of course I am, but it's a calculated risk. It's long overdue. All right, I suppose that's all for now. I'll be looking forward to your next report. Good luck. And please, be careful. Took everything and Excellent. Dead. Let me have it, children. and I'll upload it to our database. Bring these bastards to justice. No one in their right mind is going to complain about some classified UC tech. It's amazing that all this romantic nonsense about Crix's legacy really just amounts to a rumor Jasper Crix picked up in jail. It just goes to show you how a tiny rumor can snowball into a full-blown fairy tale. Anything else? Are you kidding me? Dombrowski was already making a six-figure salary, and yet he couldn't resist starting an embezzlement scheme. It makes me sick. Ah, oh, it's gonna be an absolute pleasure to throw his butt in prison. Have any more? Understood. Keep searching and you're bound to find more. Let me know if you need anything else. Yes? Sis Def Marines are the best of the best. Always a satisfying moment to return to your ship. Hey, you look well.
course while we scan for contraband. That's all we need. Enjoy Neon. Struts primed, retros firing. Anything I can... Got anything you need to offload? Trade authority is always buying. Kiosk... I'm sure you can find something. Security cares far more about what you take with you when you leave Neon than what you bring into it. Don't move, Nesha! What the hell is this about? Cut the act. The snippers picked up the Aurora you're carrying the second you step in. All right, get up slowly and turn around. Try to run and reopen fire. Smuggle the Aurora into a Kiwi city or New Atlantis? No, no, I just forgot I was carrying it, so honest mistake, right? Can, can we just settle this right here? I can pay the usual. We don't make the rules. That's Administrator Bayou's job. Now, shut up and start walking. Move it! to get zone look I've bought Aurora on the street before and I've never paid this much still cheaper than buying it at the Astro Lounge yeah you know dusted blazed frosted hi if you weren't here to buy some Aurora then what the heck do you want really you're just gonna blurt it out like that good God since it's obvious you're the rook that Delgado sent, I'm gonna save both of us some time. Turn around, fly back to the key, and tell the big boss that I'm in no mood to screw around. We'll make this deal when he starts taking me seriously.
Are you serious? You're just gonna completely blow me off like that. I spent the last three months setting up this job, burned two contacts and a hell of a lot of credits. The whole time, I'm also keeping Bayou off our backs. That idiot even catches a whiff of money and he latches onto you like a damn leech. He has certainly earned quite a reputation. Neon is proof of it. All right, all right, I get the point. Let's just get this over with. I don't have a ton of time to stand here and screw around, so I'm gonna make this as clear as possible. You want the conduction grid tech, then you're gonna have to download it from the power core of Jennerdyne's facility in the underbelly. I'm talking about Jennerdyne's main power plant for Neon. <laughs> All their cushy offices might be up in the trade tower, but the nuts and bolts of their operation are running beneath the city. <laughs> beneath your feet, genius. It's the lowest level of Neon. Jennerdyne and Xenofresh are down there, along with some of the finest cuisine in the city. Some fancy name the brain trusted Jennerdyne calls the room where all the power from the conduction grid is stored. Cute, right? Hey, don't look at me. I didn't build the damn thing. All I know is that the tech inside the place is valuable. Love the confidence. But before you pull the ripcord, I'm afraid I need to add a bit of a wrinkle. While you're inside Jennerdyne, I need you to plant a virus into their system. It's a simple side job that'll earn you some credits. I think you can handle it. Look at you. You're smarter than I thought. Jennerdyne has all sorts of tasty, valuable snacks in their databanks, and I want access. Here, take this micro drive and access the computer in Brayson Bayou's office. It'll do the rest on its own. It might be wireless, but you aren't going to be able to use it from here, genius. Jennerdyne's got their place locked down tight. But, as usual, the weak link comes from the people that work there. I recommend you start with Ayumi Komiko, an upper-level exec at Jennerdyne. Get your hands on her security pass, and you'll have the run of the place. Anyone in there? Hello? The catch is that Komiko's having a little fling with Benjamin Bayou. 
Anyway, you can find Komiko at Euphorica. Talk to the owner of the place, Micah. She'll point you in the right direction. As for dealing with Komiko herself, she's got an office in the Trade Tower if you're looking for something incriminating. The rest is up to you, Rook. When you're done, come meet me at the VIP booth in the Astral Lounge so we can celebrate. Watch your step. Benjamin Bayou has eyes everywhere. I have something I wanted to say. But I confess I am afraid of how you will react. I am reluctant to put that to the test. But it is necessary that we are honest with each other. You told me that you believe in going it alone, as you put it. But we have traveled together for a while now. I feel I must honor that time with the truth. The little I have spoken of my history has been nothing but truth. I worked with smugglers. I have caused my share of pain and suffering. What I have left out, until now, is that all of that was done on behalf of House Varun. My people. My family. They have retreated from open relations with the United Colonies and the Freestar Collective, but they still exist. I was born in the great city of Dazra, and raised with the teachings of Jinan Varun. I underwent the rite of Krajar when I came of age. I am of the promised, those who know the truth of the great serpent and his inevitable return. Thank you. I doubt many would see it that way. There is a reason that I am only just revealing this now. Several years ago, I intercepted requests from Constellation to access Varun's space, speaking only of exploration. I was sent to infiltrate Constellation, posing as a former smuggler looking for a new purpose in life. I withheld certain information, but everything I told Vladimir was, and is, true. It seemed to be enough. For a short time. Several weeks after I arrived, I attempted to access secure records within Constellation's archives. Vladimir and Sarah were waiting for me. Quite an understatement. I was horrified. My failure would be reported to the High Council, and the penalty would be severe. You are now the third person within Constellation to know. You and I have spent so much time together. It has been increasingly difficult to keep this from you. And I am sorry for that. Telling you this violates so many of the orders I was given. But it was the right thing to do. I can feel that. I know. I understand that this may change what you think of me. I know that you may no longer wish to associate with me. I believe that in this moment, honesty is more important than anything. 
No matter what happens next, I have appreciated the time with you, and I thank you for trusting me. part of town, buddy. I'm gonna do you a favor. Head back to Bayou Plaza before the disciples get you. We gotta look out for each other, right? Us crate rats used to think the Ebside strikers were awful, with all the muggings and shakedowns, but now that they're on the ropes, kinda wish they weren't just holed up in Madame Sauvages. Streets are getting bad. Real bad. Well, you'll find them at Madame Sauvage's. They're always holding auditions, as they call it. Looking for new blood. So, for being so helpful, chance for a donation. Come on, might be saving my life. What with the disciples and all. Have a heart. Hey, thanks. Look, I mean it. Go back to the plaza. Ain't nothing but shit and misery. about you, but I am starting to suspect that clearly the intent is to get us into the Astral Lounge. Shall we? We follow this eye? Yeah, what? Is this important? I'm really busy right now. Let me save you some time. If you're here for a job, we're not hiring. If you're here about the conduction grid tour, we shut it down a year ago. Good. If you were, you'd be the twelfth person I've turned away this year. What a waste. Look, I'm sorry if I'm blowing up at you, but I've got a ton of problems and no time to deal with them all. I'm afraid that things aren't going terribly well around here. I wish that was the case. Fact of the matter is, we're barely treading water. The conduction grid went online almost 75 years ago. And since then, we haven't developed a single groundbreaking innovation. At this point, the money we're taking in as a power utility barely covers the waste that's going on in the research and development division. <laughs> You'd think that, right? The problem is that Brayson Bayou, administrator Bayou's brother, is currently heading up the R&D division. I swear to you, the man doesn't know the first thing about power systems or electromagnetic technology. None whatsoever. Look, I'm running out of options. No one above me seems to care what's going on, but I'm willing to take a chance. I have a full report on Brayson that I want to send to Administrator Bayou, but I don't know if he can be trusted. What do you think I should do? Uh, you know what? 
You're absolutely right. I've heard Bayus killed people for doing less. What the hell was I even thinking? Hey, look. Uh, thanks for helping me out with this. It's been on my mind for a long time. If there's anything else you need, any questions at all, feel free to ask. As long as it doesn't get me into serious trouble, ask away. Whoa. Okay, that's crossing the line. I can't discuss company matters like this. I hear you. I'd like to think so. I mean, it might be okay. That's what I'm hoping. Okay, listen. You didn't hear this from me, but I know she's up to something with Benjamin Bayou. He was in her office a few weeks ago, and they had some kind of shouting match. It got really heated until Bayou stormed out the door. I don't know what it was about, but I happen to know Miss Komiko keeps audio recordings of all her meetings in her safe. And before you ask, yes, I'll unlock it for you. Just don't tell anyone I helped, okay? We're done talking about that. Sorry. You want to do some digging? Because I'm sick and tired of the corruption that's running through this city. People around here spend half their lives terrified about being backstabbed. And spend the rest of it planning on how they're going to screw over someone else. Something rotten is going on in this company. And one day, I hope to find out what it is. Thanks for taking the time to talk. Is there a type of weapon Combatech won't make? What do you think you're doing? chat. Welcome. Please, make yourself comfortable. I can offer you a drink, or perhaps you're here seeking access to our members' lounge, where you can enjoy your Aurora experience in peace. By the third Chimera, you're floating on frickin' cloud nine. No, no, not this again. You people should leave her alone. What do you want with her? I got learn to mix a drink like that anyway. Let's face it, some people are just... Gifted. Yeah, sure. Tell me another one. You debt collectors are low-life assholes. She's broke, okay? Now get out of my club before I get really pissed off and have you thrown into the street. I suspect I would enjoy the attempt much more than you would. The... the Crimson Fleet? 
Oh my, I I'm sorry. I had no idea. I didn't mean anything by it, really. Sorry, I just... Well, I worry about her. Ayumi owes a lot of money around town. I'm trying to help her out. But, you know, I have a business to keep afloat. If you want to talk to her, you can find her in the members' lounge. Of course, access to the lounge is going to cost you. And I'm not changing my mind about that. Excellent. Then here is your access key. Please let us know if anything in the lounge interferes with your comfort. Enjoy your stay. Micah knows how to make a drink. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, you must be zoned out of your mind, because there's no way anyone sober would say something like that. How the hell did you find that? It was Estelle Vincent, wasn't it? That bitch. I knew I should have kept that somewhere else. Here, take this pass. It should get you through the storage room entry to the facility. I'm warning you, though. Once you're inside, you're trespassing in a high security zone. That means they shoot on sight. Good luck. You're going to need it. I just know this is gonna come back to bite me on the ass. I just know it. this side of the glass, for a variety of reasons. Looks like this goes up to another floor.
not to leave anything useful. I'm out! <laughs> 
Stop! Please! Don't shoot. If you want the encryption cipher, you're, you're welcome to it. There's no need for all this violence. No. No catch. I I'm not trying to trick you. You want the cipher? It it's yours. At this point, I'd do anything to get back at my brother. He deserves everything he's got coming to him. I think you could safely say that most of Neon would agree. You know, I've spent my entire life living in Ben's shadow. Everything always works out for him. While, I, while I've been bouncing from one job to the next, barely keeping afloat. And all the while, he laughs at me behind my back. Thinks it's hilarious to make fun of his, his stupid brother. Like I wouldn't eventually find out. Yeah. That would be nice. You know what? I am sick to death of being pushed around. It's my turn to take control for once. The passcode for my terminal is GEN-41A18. That should give you access to the cipher and whatever else you need. I'm getting out of here while I still can. After you're done, I suggest you do the same. Because he's a two-faced son of a bitch, that's why. That's not like I should be surprised. When we were younger, we, we never got along very well. I mean, he's 11 years older than I am. We had two different mothers. Might as well have been from two separate families. Well, that's an understatement. I never knew my actual mother. She was my father's mistress. And I was told she vanished from Neon when I was only two years old. Ben's mother? She didn't give a crap about me. Wouldn't even let me call her mom. I just had to call her Liliana. <laughs> Can you imagine? And then there's Dad. So buried in the day-to-day -day operations of Neon, he didn't have time to pay attention to his bastard son. Yeah, maybe. Or, he could just be a first-class asshole who takes after our father. Look, I appreciate what you're trying to do, and, and it's nice to get this off my chest, but talking about it isn't gonna change a thing. That's why I gave you the encryption cipher. Anything I can do to stick it to Ben, that's the real therapy. As usual, you can thank my dear brother for that. At first, he made me deputy administrator. Now I'm well, until I wouldn't cooperate with Owen Dexler and all of his thugs at Neon Security. Then he had me work with Valentina over at Xenofresh, helping with Aurora distribution, until she pinned the credit skimming scam on me. And now, here I am, chief technician at Jennerdyne. I don't even know the first thing about electrical engineering. On a scale of one to ten, one being the worst, I'm at about, I don't know, a negative eight. I don't have the background for this electrical engineering stuff, chief technician. It's, it's ridiculous. Ben stuck me down here expecting me to work miracles. He didn't stop for even a second to think of the repercussions. It's so typical. All I need is one breakthrough. One, and I could shove this job right in his face. Damn, that would feel good. Of course. The storage tech that Dr. Corbin came up with. How can I miss that? 
Generdyne could make a fortune selling those to outposts for power collection purposes. It's perfect. Thank you for giving me that kick in the ass I needed to get going. Do me a favor and don't tell my brother we talked. He, uh, wouldn't like it. you are. What kept you? I believe we have a lot to discuss. It's obvious you're here to meet someone. Fortunately for them, they rented this VIP room under a false name. I assume that same someone provided you with that clever little virus you installed into Genodyne systems. All too well. You know, I should give credit where it's due. That virus is quite impressive. It will cost me tens of thousands of credits to remove. That's the last time I'll ever take the Crimson Fleet's capabilities for granted. Probably. But do you want to know why that's not going to happen? It's because I don't negotiate with pirates. They don't understand commitments or contracts. How to get the deal done with finesse. No. For your kind, it's only brute force and violence. Shoot first, take whatever you want, and ask questions later. That's not how I do business. There. You see? All you know how to do is threaten violence. Exactly my point. Look, I'm not here to debate. I'm here to make an offer. All you have to do is tell me who's profiting from the virus you've uploaded. In return, I'll let you leave the city alive. That is an offer? Your negotiating skills are impressive indeed. You don't have to worry about that in the least. You point me to our little mole and I'll do the rest. You don't even have to get your hands dirty. Really, that's the story you're going with. Very well. There's a body that Neon Security is going to be discovering very soon. One with concrete evidence that links you to the murder. I'd say you have about one hour to leave this place before you have a price on your head. I almost admire your commitment to corruption. Almost. So, I assume this concludes our little arrangement, and you'll be leaving our fair city. Oh, when you get back to the Key, be certain to give Neva and Delgado my warmest regard.
security's got his eyes on Saburo Okadigbo. That guy's trouble for his dad's kid. Ebside's a bad place for tourists these days. Glad you're back. Sorry about the whole Benjamin Bayou thing at the Astral Lounge, but I didn't have much of a choice. Can you believe the nerve of that smug son of a bitch? The man is priceless. You're not the least bit concerned that he found the virus and figured out where we were meeting that quickly. Must be nice to be so naive. I'm glad someone's happy. Since Bayou flagged the virus, I can't risk accessing the system now. All that work I did trying to crack Jenardine is gone. Now I'm in a bit of a bind. The prep work for this job put me in deep for a bunch of cash and I have no way to pay it all back. <laughs> That's exactly what I had in mind. I guess you aren't such a rook after all. How much uh, are you willing to part with? This is perfect. It will definitely help. Thank you. Clearly, you are very welcome. All right, I guess we're done here. Tell Delgado if he ever needs me for anything else. I've still got his back. And hey, you won't be hearing Rook from me anymore. As far as I'm concerned, you're one of us now. Lifeblood of the fleet. If anyone tries to tell you otherwise, you send them to talk to me. Just watch your ass. Benny isn't exactly gonna be tickled that you've been talking to his brother. I have zoned out of my mind right now. All hell's breaking loose, Rook. Delgado needs you in the repair bay with Jazz as soon as possible.
Hooray! You got the conduction gizmo. You did exactly what we asked you to do. Good work, Pat on the head. Are you ignoring me or something? I just said there's an emergency. Oh, it's bad, real bad. Delgado will fill you in with the details. Now get your ass to the repair bay. Go!